Hello and welcome! This video is going to be all about keyword grouping. We'll figure out what it is and how you can do it in SEO ranking. Alright, so keyword grouping is the process of creating groups or clusters of related keywords based on their search result similarities. If you want to properly distribute keywords across your site's web pages, you need to group them first. Grouping keywords will also help you understand how to plan out your website structure, what pages you'll be promoting, how many additional pages you need to create, and where you need to update content. You get a lot of advantages from using SEO Rankings Keyword Grouper. For example, you can save a significant amount of time. Sure, you can perform this task manually, but be prepared that it may take hours, days, or even weeks. You can also determine the basic site structure and minimize errors that are unavoidable during manual keyword grouping. The tool helps avoid negative impact when you use similar keywords across different web pages of the same site. Plus, you can get help in cleaning up your semantic core and getting rid of irrelevant keywords. The more keywords you have in your core, the higher the chances are that there are errors. On top of that, you can get a ready-made list of keywords that can be used in SEO copywriting. Alright, let's get to it! Before you can start grouping keywords, you first need to have something to group. Start by collecting as many relevant keywords as possible to target on your site, and then put them all together into a single list. As a matter of fact, SE Ranking has the perfect tool to help you do this called Keyword Suggestions that can be found under Keyword Research. Here, you can just select a region, enter a keyword, and get a list of similar, related keywords, as well as long tail suggestions from Google. But, you can also expand your semantic core with the help of other keyword tools like Google Keyword Planner. Now, once your list of keywords is ready, head on over to the Keyword Grouper tool. The first thing you need to do here is decide what the title of your report will be so that it'll be easier for you to find it later on. Then, select the country and specify the location down to the city or zip code level whose search results will be analyzed during the keyword grouping process. We advise you to select a country where you're either promoting your website or are planning to. If you have a website that supports multiple languages, you can group your keywords for each language region separately. Doing so will allow you to take regional search results into account when optimizing your semantic core. In the next step, you need to select the Google Interface language and keep in mind that you need to go for the language that your target audience uses when running online searches. Next, set the keyword grouping accuracy level on a scale of 1 to 9. The keyword grouping accuracy level is the minimum number of URLs that two keywords need to have in common in the SERP in order to be grouped together. Let's say you set the keyword grouping accuracy level to 3. So, what does our robot do? It scans the keyword SERP for the selected region and looks for matching results. The analyzed keywords are then put together into a single group only if the top 10 search results for each keyword contain at least three identical web pages. There's a higher chance that you'll find three to four matching web pages in the SERP than seven to nine identical ones. So, the higher the accuracy, the fewer keywords will be put together into a single keyword group. For informational websites and blog posts, it's important to collect as many keywords as possible for a single page. If you decide to break keywords down into groups too much and as a result create several pages based on such groups, they can start competing with each other in the SERPs, something known as keyword cannibalization. For such sites, we recommend setting the keyword grouping accuracy level to 3 or 4. But if you're working with a site that contains a large number of pages and has a complex structure such as online stores, it's better to break keywords down into more specific groups, that is, set a high keyword grouping accuracy level. You can always repeat the grouping process using different accuracy settings to determine the most suitable option for you. The next important step is selecting the keyword grouping method. The available options are soft and hard. If you go for the soft grouping method, the system will find the keyword with the highest monthly search volume and compare it with every other keyword in the list to see how many URLs they have in common among the top 10 search results. If the number of common URLs matches the set keyword grouping accuracy level, the keywords will be put into a single group. Every keyword in a group will have URLs in common with the keyword with the highest monthly search volume, but they may not have any URLs in common with one another. Note that if you select the soft grouping method, you will ultimately get fewer keyword groups, but each group will contain more keywords. It's best to choose this method if you have an aggregator site, a blog, or a media site. Now let's take a look at the hard grouping method. It compares every keyword in the list against one another and groups them together if they have the same set of URLs in the top 10 search results given the set grouping accuracy level. Since this method has a high grouping accuracy level, 
It eliminates the possibility of a group containing any irrelevant keywords. We recommend using the hard grouping method when you need to have keywords that match perfectly in a single group. For example, say you're promoting a client's website and you make a promise that each of the keywords in the list will make it to the top of the search results. For this reason, it's important for these keywords to be as relevant as possible to the topic of the page and to the other keywords in the group. The next step is the search volume check. The tool can actually check the search volume of keywords during the grouping process. Having keyword search volume data can ultimately help you identify your most promising keywords and filter out unpopular ones. Now, if you've already checked the search volume of keywords while you were doing keyword research, you can upload the file to the tool where one column contains the keyword and the other indicates its search volume. Or, you cannot check the search volume at all. And finally, the last step is adding the keywords. You can either enter them manually right over here or import a file. The cost of the keyword grouping process is calculated depending on the number of keywords added to the tool and whether or not you have decided to run a search volume check. If everything's ready, start grouping your keywords. While the system's doing all the heavy lifting, you can go ahead and focus on other things. Once the results are in, you can find them under the results tab. Here we can straight away see the total number of keywords that were submitted for grouping and the set grouping accuracy level. By clicking on any report in this table, you will access its data that includes a list of keyword groups, each group's search volume, if any, and the total number of keywords that were put in each group. Each group is named after the keyword with the highest search volume. By clicking on a keyword group, you'll get such data as the list of keywords that were grouped together. Then we have their search volume, if you decided to run a search volume check or uploaded a file that already has search volume data. The third column shows how many URLs each keyword has in common. The more matches there are, the more relevant the pages are from the point of view of search engines. Next, we have the top 10 search results for each keyword in the group. Make sure to check them out since they could well be your competitors. The last column contains a list of keywords that search engines emboldened in snippets for the given keyword. Here you can find synonyms and similar keywords that you can use to expand your site's semantic core or content. These keywords can also be used in tags. At the very end of the result list, you'll find ungrouped keywords, as in those that weren't added to any group. Take a good look at these keywords. Perhaps you can manually add them to existing groups, create separate pages for these keywords, or just delete them. You can export your keyword groups into a convenient for you file format, or add keyword groups to a project. And that's everything you have to do to group your semantic core. Add your keywords, configure the grouping settings, and analyze the results. By the way, you can also group your existing semantic core, the one that you group manually. And while you're at it, check the accuracy and possibly make changes. If you have any questions about the tool, leave a comment below or contact us via live chat. Sign up to our YouTube channel to be the first to know when we release a new video on how to use SEO ranking. And if you like it, leave a like.